Decontamination work in Fukushima Prefecture is producing massive amounts of radioactive soil and debris. Three years since the nuclear accident and the waste is still piled up in residential areas. Yes. I hope it will be disposed of somewhere, but I didn't task for the government to rebuild Fukushima. In December, the government asked some municipalities in the prefecture to accept storage facilities. It's indispensable for the reconstruction of Fukushima. The government plans to buy areas around the crippled nuclear plant to build the facilities. Many residents are still living away from their homes. They know such facilities are necessary, but are somewhat unconvinced. I miss our home, the rice paddies, and the mountains. All I can do is keep the memories of them in my heart. The government promises that the waste will only be stored in Fukushima temporarily until its final disposal. But some residents are doubtful. The facilities could turn out to be final disposal sites. Who knows? Disposing of radioactive soil and debris is the key to rebuilding Fukushima. Today we'll see what's hampering the project. Welcome to today's close-up. I'm Katsuyasu Uchida. The Fukushima nuclear accident in March 2011 released a huge amount of radiation into the environment. Work to decontaminate areas exposed to it has produced an enormous amount of contaminated soil and fallen leaves. The absence of facilities to store this huge volume of waste is hampering decontamination efforts. About 140,000 Fukushima residents are still living away from their homes. Building waste storage facilities seems vital to allow them to return as soon as possible. Under a government plan, low-level radioactive waste produced by decontamination work is temporarily stored in each community and then transferred to intermediate storage facilities to be created by the government. Within 30 years, the waste will be disposed of at yet unspecified locations outside Fukushima. All waste produced by decontamination work will be placed in the intermediate storage facilities. Last month, the government proposed some candidate sites in the towns of Futaba, Okuma and Naraha near the nuclear plant. It plans to purchase land totaling 19 square kilometers. The government says the proposed sites will be wide enough to take in a total of 28 million cubic meters of waste. This is what the storage facilities will look like. Former residential areas will be converted to allow for the construction of different facilities that can sort low-level radioactive waste, incinerate some of it to reduce its amount, and store it. The project is estimated to cost more than $9 billion, including maintenance costs. The government hopes to start bringing in the waste in January next year, forcing people in the three towns to make a heart-wrenching decision. Okuma town is home to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The town's radiation levels are so high that much of it has been designated a no-entry zone. The entire Koirino district is part of a proposed site for intermediate storage facilities. NHK asked evacuees from this community whether they accept this. Of the 43 families that used to live there, 33 responded. More than 80 percent accept the plan, but many said it is an extremely hard decision for them to make.
They wrote, it is hard to give up our ancestral land, but important to put to good use any land that's become uninhabitable. Some places must accept waste produced by decontamination, or there will be no reconstruction. I believe it will be almost impossible to return home. But it is still very hard to come to terms with that reality. Mitsuharu Nemoto heads the community. This is a blueprint drawn up by the government. The nuclear plant is north. The red areas are sites for planned storage facilities. Nemoto's ancestral farmland and a plot of land for his delivery farm both lie there. I was speechless when I saw it. He says he understands that Fukushima needs such storage facilities, but it is still heartbreaking. The homes, the rice paddies, the mountains, these are the things that everybody in the community, including myself, has grown up with. These things have sort of become part of us. But now they've been contaminated and will have to be buried, covered by soil. Only their memories will live on. One of the two other candidate towns is not a no-entry zone. Radiation levels in Naraha town are so low that the government says residents should be able to return soon. Decontamination work in the town is scheduled to end this March. The government's proposal to build a storage facility there has confused residents. Kazumi Ashiguchi is a mason. He resumed work in August 2012, soon after the government allowed residents to return home during the day. He and other residents who have begun working again worry that a waste storage facility may prevent the town's reconstruction. Some people who have been thinking about returning home may decide not to. Many people may change their minds. It's possible to go back and live in Naraha now, so the idea of building a storage facility there makes no sense at all. Ashiguchi is against the plan primarily because of his children and grandchildren. These are my grandchildren. Since the nuclear accident, his daughter and her family have evacuated elsewhere. She says her family will not return to Nanaha if the storage facility is built. My daughter has made that clear. This is happening just when radiation levels have become so low, she and her family could come back and live with us. It's so frustrating.
Some people in Naraha say it may be in the town's own interest to accept the government's plan. Decontamination workers spend a lot of money in the local supermarket. Supporters of the plan say the construction of a waste storage facility will bring in more workers and help revive the local economy. The town is divided on whether to accept the government's plan. I don't deny that Fukushima needs the intermediate storage facilities, but Naraha is a place where radiation levels are now so low that people are looking to return. I want the government to keep this in mind. Joining me are Senior Vice Environment Minister Shinji Inoue and NHK reporter Kei Nakazawa. Mr Inoue, residents of the towns asked to accept radioactive waste understand that storage facilities are necessary to rebuild Fukushima, but if they accept them, they'll lose their hometowns. What do you think about this dilemma? It pains me to think of those who are going to lose their hometowns. I've been visiting Fukushima every week since assuming my current post. The NHK survey in your report said 80 percent of residents support having a storage facility in their community, but it was a difficult choice. I would call their support passive support. They will have to shoulder the heavy burden of accepting contaminated soil and other radioactive waste from elsewhere in Fukushima. We want to win their understanding by clearly explaining why the facilities are needed and how the government will ensure their safety.